Missed you. Amen. Listen, <laughs> turn into your Bibles. <laughs> My wife is shaking her head at me, so she disapproves. I apologize. Amen. Turn in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4. It's all love, man. Come on now. Hey, praise God. We want to continue on. We've been speaking about in these Wednesdays uh, um, kingdom prosperity. Um, and it's, it's, it's one of those topics that, you know, just keeps on giving. Amen. And there's a, you know, there's, there's a lot to give. And, um, so I want to continue that on tonight um, out of the book of Philippians. We're going to be reading from chapter number four. You know, in 2018, it was a day that not many people are going to forget. Um, some people, it was a real sad day. Some people, it was uh, filled with uh, bewilderment. Um, some people didn't know what to do with themselves, but I remember it started in early February 2018. I remember it clearly. Uh, um, KFCs all over the country started to close. I know, I know, it's painful, right? As I went to KFC, I saw that the sign said, sorry, we are closed. And I drove to another one, it said the same thing. And what had happened is... Uh, KFC started running out of chicken um, and, you know, they had nothing to serve. It was a crazy. I don't know if anyone remembers that in 2018. It was just me, just greedy me. Okay, just me. A couple of people remember that. But the reason I say that is because as it started, the place was going crazy. People were going mad. KFC has run out of chicken and uh, it's, it's even crazy. Some of them tried to stay open um, and just serve other things. And it's like, well, what else are you going to serve at KFC? So they quickly closed as well, and it was people were taking a bit too far. People were calling the police, saying that KFC is closed. So much so that Tower Hill or Tower Hamlet's police department had to put out a tweet that said, "Please do not contact us about KFC. This crisis is not a police matter." I'm telling you, this is what happened. People were going mad, it was going crazy. The BBC had it filming and interviewing people. People were upset. This one lady was saying, I couldn't believe it. I had to go to Burger King instead. <laughs> she was saying that on live news. It was crazy. It was going all over the country. Like they've got around 950 shops. Uh, uh, um, I believe almost 700 of them were closed, uh, had no chicken. Um, and it all came to a head uh, when people found out that was due to swap into a different logistics company. Now, this was while I was working. Many of you know that I, I worked for DHL. I worked, amen, past tense, for DHL Express UK. But it was our sister company, DHL Supply Chain, that messed it up. And everyone realized it was DHL supply chain. And every time I walked around or anyone in a DHL uniform or DHL van, they would literally stop vans. I remember I got stopped and saying, hey, where's the chicken at? <laughs> it's like, where's the chicken? We're getting blamed. It's like, listen, it's not me, man. It's like, hey, news said it was DHL. You guys are all the same. For, for months, we was getting it. Where's the chicken? And the reason I say that is because they had a huge problem with supply chain. And a supply chain is hugely important. There were courses like supply chain management that exist because it is a critical part of industry. If I'm not mistaken, I believe we have a, a graduate of supply chain management right here. Come on now. And it's a critical part of industry uh, because it's all to do with making sure that certain industries or shops or, or outlets uh, uh, have the necessary resource to continue what they need to do. And I'm saying that tonight not just to talk about the industry that I used to be a part of, but really to understand that supply chain is also true in the life of you and I tonight as well. We've been talking about kingdom prosperity and we're going to look at uh, uh, the source of the supply in a sermon of entitled The Supply Chain. Look at Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 15. This is Paul the Apostle talking to the church in Philippi. He says these words, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. 
For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And look at verse number 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ. Jesus, now to our God and Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The supply chain. I want to consider first with you about connecting to the supply chain. In our text, Paul is describing a situation where the church in Philippi rose to the occasion of a need. They noticed a need. They saw a need in this apostle's life that he was a a traveling preacher and and he would need resources. He would need sustenance. He would need clothing or whatever he would need. They saw a need. And in our text, the Bible says that Paul recognized that they recognized that he had a need. Look in verse number 15 again. It says, when I depart from Macedonia, no church shared with me uh, concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once again for my necessity. When God provides, uh, there is an expectation that others will be blessed also. As we spoke about kingdom prosperity in the last couple of weeks, we spoke about uh, uh, poverty being a curse. We spoke about uh, the fact that God wants you to prosper. But how many know it doesn't end there? There is an expectation that you and I as men and women of God, as we begin to prosper, listen, we have the means now to bless other people around us. There is an expectation that we as believers are able to bless people, find a need and meet the need. Listen, when God spoke to Abraham, his name was Abraham back then, the father of the faith. He said this in Genesis 12 and verse number two. God is speaking. He says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Listen, that's the will of God for people's lives. He is going to bless you. He's going to prosper you. But not, it doesn't just stop there with you and yours. It's so that you can be a blessing. You can go ahead and then bless somebody. This is usually why God gives us things in the first place. Yes, He gives us things to take care of our needs, to take care of uh, the things that we have, but He also blesses us so that we can be a blessing. Listen, you are blessed to be a blessing. Look at Hebrews 13 and verse number 16. It says this, Do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. In other words, when you remember the things that you have are a blessing and you have and you're able to bless somebody else, when you remember to do good and share, the Bible says that God is well pleased. And it's a good pattern to remember this, a good pattern to, uh, to, to look for people who are in need. Where there is a need, you can think, how can I meet this need? Does anybody have a need? Uh, look, the story in Luke chapter 10, the, the account of the Good Samaritan, we understand this story, this account uh, where it comes around, where somebody is uh, uh, robbed and beaten and left on the roadside. Listen, how many know in that account, three people saw, but only one people saw the need or one people one person the grammar is terrible one person saw the need come on there was a need there and the bible says there was people that walked past they saw the person on the side of the road but what they failed to see was the opportunity to help out a need verse number 15 we kind of see this here Paul says in our text when I departed from Macedonia no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only. There is an opportunity that we can, or there's a time that we can see a need and and like those people walk on the other side. We saw the person, we saw what's going on, but we didn't actually see the need or we didn't see an opportunity to help somebody in need. Listen, there is, if you have a good pattern, look around, there'll be needs quite close to you that need to be met. There may be friends, there may be brothers and sisters in church who you know they were going through some things and you have the ability to help 
help out. Listen, it's a good pattern to start to look up, open your eyes when you're walking down a road and you might see somebody in need and that is an opportunity for you to connect to the supply source. You know, in our, in our church in Derby, we had this uh, thing where, you know, in our, in our offering times, we, we give offerings and uh, we, we had envelopes to put uh, offering in as well. We'll be having those soon in this church as well, gift aid envelopes. But one of the things that used to happen in Derby is that uh, people would get wind of other people that may have a need and uh, they would put money in an envelope. But instead of it being an offering for the church, they'll put somebody's name on the envelope. The ushers knew the, the process. We knew what to do. If we saw an envelope with some Somebody's name on them. What we would do is, after we count the offering, we'll go and take that envelope and give it to the person that had, that his name was on. And many times, uh, uh, people that I heard testimonies, uh, people saying, "Listen, I was praying uh, that God would supply a need, and then I received an envelope with my name on it, <laughs> and it was the exact amount that I needed to, I don't know, pay rent or pay my light bill or eat food that evening, and so on." Listen, it was a, a blessing because there was people in that church that would uh, uh, lift up their eyes, uh, open up their ears, and when they can hear a need they can hear something right right there's an opportunity I get to meet that need and it wasn't like look at me look what I'm giving to this person nobody knew if the ushers saw it they they kind of just kept it you know they just kept it to themselves they didn't see but someone put in an envelope and we'll count them and we'll see oh that has somebody's name and let's give it to them and God is glorified and listen can I tell you the people that did that listen they themselves will be connected to the supply chain We can pray to meet for needs as well. There's a sort, you know, you may not be able to see or hear people's needs. People don't want to speak, but you can pray, God, uh, uh, put a need in front of me. God, uh, uh, put something here. I've heard many testimonies. People say, God told me to give this to you. Uh, and uh, many times the receiver will say, this is exactly what I was praying for, exactly what I was asking for. Listen, pray. You can have a pattern to say, God, show me a need. Show me something uh, that I can link to. Listen, giving opens a door. Door, it's almost as if it puts us in a supply chain contract. It connects us with the supplier and not just any supplier. It connects us with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We should have that kind of view. Listen, how can I meet somebody's need here? The church in Philippi saw what Paul was doing. And it says, you know, we need to meet needs. We need to do that. Look at Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 9 here. Bible says this, and let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Such a blessing when people have that kind of viewpoint. Even here, I remember in this congregation, when we was going to an impact team to Paris, I had a, a man of God come up to me and say, listen, I know you guys are going to impact. Is there anybody that wants to go but can't afford it? Looking for a need. Listen, how can I, how can I plug that gap? How can I meet the need? I'm, I'm blessed when I hear people speak like that. Do you know anybody that has a need? I want to fulfill something. Listen, somebody that speaks like that, they're connected to the supplier. They have an idea of what is going on here. And that's what the church in Philippi did. They connected themselves to the supplier. And I want to move on and talk about the nature of, of the supply. You know, in our text, it says in verse number 18, Indeed, I have all and I abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. And verse number 19 is one of the uh, most spoken verses, or one of them out there. It says, And my God shall supply all your need. Who is the supplier here? God. In supply chain management, you know, it's important that you know enough about the supplier to feel confident that the supply chain would work. 
It's important you know who, okay, in this whole link, in this logistics chain, who is the supplier here? And listen, in supply chain management, you do research into who the supplier is, what resources they have, what capability uh, they, they, uh, they possess, uh, what infrastructure they have, just to understand if you can be confident that this supply chain is going to work. Well, in our text, God lets the, the church in Philippi know that the supplier is is God himself. Listen, God's supply is based on his character. If you're here on Sunday morning, I preached a sermon about character and what character means and talking about ourselves. But here I want to switch it and talk about the character of God. We understand character means who you really are or what comes naturally to you, what is actually on the inside, not just reputation, what people think about you. Character is what comes out naturally. Well, we have to understand that God's character is also on display. Paul's statement begins to carry more weight when you understand the character of God. He says, my God shall supply all your need. Well, if you understand the character of God, then that sentence now carries more weight. And one way to understand the character of God is to understand what the Word of God reveals about the names of God. We understand that names, uh, uh, especially in biblical times, is the nature of a person. I make a joke saying in this day and age, names has kind of lost all meaning now. We just have made up names and so on. People just name things for the sake of how it sounds and so on. But back in these times, names actually meant something. Names revealed the nature of a person, what they were like, what they have done or what they will do. And many times uh, uh, in the Bible, God is revealed with a name that gives us insight into his character. He's revealed by a name that shows the character he is displaying. Many times he reveals himself by a specific name. And look at Psalms number, Psalms chapter 9, verse number 10. It said, those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Those who know your name, or in other words, those who know what kind of character you have or what kind of persona you have. And I want to kind of look at this, how God reveals his character in provision with three distinct names. Now, of course, we know God reveals himself with many names and shows his character about many different things. But I want to kind of localize it in the area of provision with three distinct names. The first being El Elyon or God the Most High. Look at Genesis 14 and verse number 19. This is again speaking of Abraham. It says, and he blessed him and said, blessed be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. El Elyon, El meaning God, Elyon meaning highest, so literally the highest God. And it goes on to say, possessor of heaven and earth. This is the one who Paul speaks of when he says that he will supply all your need. The God, the most high shall supply your need. The one who is the great I am, the one who is the creator, not just the possessor of heaven and earth, but the creator of heaven and earth. Paul is saying him, there's none beside him. No one can compare. Others are works of man's hands or works of their imagination. He is the living God, the the highest in rank, the highest in authority. And Paul is saying it's that one that will supply all your need. Imagine that. Imagine now the weight that that sentence has when we understand who Paul is talking about. Paul is talking about the highest in rank. The one that possesses everything. He is the one that's to supply all your needs. El Elyon, God the Most High. There's another name we want to look at, and it is El Shaddai, God the Almighty. Genesis 17, verse number one. It says, When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. 
I mean, El Shaddai, God the Almighty, kind of has a, a connotation around it already, but the actual Hebrew behind it, there is a bit of a debate into what actually Shaddai actually means. Uh, but I'm going to pick out uh, three commentators on what they say. But if you listen to what they say, they kind of corroborate. So the first one I want to bring to your attention that someone has a, a, a defined Shaddai, meaning God who is all sufficient. In other words, with God, you would have everything you need. With God, you would be sufficient. With God, you would have everything that is required. He is the all-sufficient one. I mean, that description or that definition is almost all I need to hear, but it carries on. Another commentator says that Shaddai is from the Hebrew word Shaddai, which means to shed or to pour out. In other words, the God who pours out blessing and continually and abundantly and richly. In other words, to pour out with no lack to pour out and there won't be any left over Shaddai another one the third one the Hebrew word uh, Shaddai they're saying comes from the word Shad which means chest or breast in the connotation of a, a nurturing mother feeding her child and if you link the words uh, uh, together it means many breasted now think about it, when you've got a newborn baby, listen, the, 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 the two breasts of the mother are sufficient, are enough for the child, but this is saying that he is many-breasted. In other words, it is more than you will ever need. It's more than enough. And as you think about the, the name El Shaddai, God the Almighty, it all alludes to God being enough, not just enough, being more than enough. And it reminds me of that song, Christ is enough for me. Come on, when you think about that, listen, it's saying that when you have God, you'll have all that you will ever need. You will not lack. You will not uh, think, okay, I've got this, but I need God and something else, or I need Jesus and something else. No, El Shaddai, God the Almighty, the all-powerful one, um, kind of puts him in the realm where it says, listen, when you have that God that supplies your need, listen, you will not lack anything. And of course, the third one, how can I speak about God as the supply chain or the supplier without mentioning the name Jehovah Jireh? God will provide. Genesis chapter 22. It's the account where God tells Abraham to take his child, his child that was the promised child that would uh, uh, bring about the uh, uh, blessing of the nations. Take, take that child, Isaac, and go and sacrifice him. And he, he was testing his heart, of course. And, and when he gets up there, uh, as he's about to sacrifice his child, we realize that uh, Abraham lifted up his eyes, the Bible says in verse number 13, Genesis Genesis chapter 22, it says, Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked. There behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, The Lord will provide, or Jehovah Jireh. And it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. If you look at the account, Abraham had a need and the Lord provided for that need. God sees our needs and provides for them. If you think about that account, he goes up and he's in this place. It's just him and his son. There was no lamb uh, to be uh, found anywhere or ram to be found anywhere. But all of a sudden, as the need arises, he looks up and there just happens to be a ram caught in the, thic in the, in the thicket. Uh, uh, so his horns were there waiting for Abraham just to pick him up and offer him there. Listen, that sometimes is how... God provides. You have no idea how this is going to happen. No idea how we're going to make this. But all of a sudden you look up and there's a ram there. Listen, the ram wasn't there before. It wasn't just waiting to be caught. No, God provided it. God was able to do that. And when you understand who the supplier is, you understand that you don't have to fear anything because God is the Most High. God is the Almighty and God is Jehovah Jireh, the one that will provide. Can you say amen to that? We have context now into what Paul was saying. 
Context now to what Paul was trying to build confidence in the church of Philippi, saying that this God, the one who is the most high, the one who is all sufficient, the one who will provide, shall supply all your needs. The supply chain will work efficiently because the supplier is God. And provision is not what God does, but provision is who God is. Come, this is his very nature. He wants to provide. I can give you countless stories of how uh, God has provided for me and my family throughout this life. I mean, we've heard testimonies from behind this pulpit of our very own people here talking about how God has supplied. I, 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 I seem to remember uh, messages from Connor, how he was telling me, Pastor, the situation is now officially impossible for me to get a sponsor for my wife. I loved it because it's in text we can see it but now he's working a job started two days ago the situation is no longer impossible it is possible why because God provided come on we need to understand that the supply chain will work because the supplier is God the supply chain will go. Listen, we won't run out. We won't have lack because the supplier is God. And I want to kind of move to this last point as we kind of draw this to a close. In our text, Paul goes on to solidify the supply chain by saying this, my God shall supply all your need. And look at this, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus the supply comes from his own resources. It's important that we, uh, we understand this because sometimes we can get the source of our supply mixed up. Sometimes we can look at our supply coming in, we can look at our income, we can look at our resources and we can get the source of that all mixed up. Sometimes we can look at life and we think my source is my boss at work. My source is my parents or my source is the country's economy. The source I have is the government, the welfare system, etc. And it goes on and goes on. And, and, and people, when you rely on these sources, listen, you can be on edge. Why? Because these sources can go wrong. These sources can, can run out. Stock markets can crash. Listen, there was in the Great Depression, stock market crashed. People committed suicide. Because they thought, this is my livelihood. This is everything I have. My source is this stock market. And when it crashed, then I guess I have to take my own life because there's nothing else. People can lose their job, be made redundant. They fall into depression thinking, how am I going to live on? Economies can fail and people are, oh, get all panicky about what's happening. Listen, I thank God that it's according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That means the economy can do whatever it wants. Stock market can go up, go down. Listen, my job can make me redundant. It can mean whatever because it is not according to any of these resources. It's according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Come on. And those riches don't run out. Come on, do you know how I know that? Because he spoke into existence the very thing that we uh, uh, live and breathe. He spoke into existence all the natural resources of the world. And if he can speak it into existence, how many know he can speak more into existence? Come on, we sometimes think if, uh, if the pie is cut this way and cut that way and shared out over there, shared out, there's only a small little bit of pie left for me, so I need to get in there. Listen, I know the baker. <laughs> Come on now, there is no lack in his supply. There is no lack in what he can deliver. I thank God that it's according to his riches by, uh, uh, in glory by Christ Jesus. Uh, listen, the thing is, if we don't lay a hold of this, uh, we can end up honouring the wrong source. Come on, we can end up honouring the wrong source. Now all of a sudden, your boss is able to tell you when you can work, what hours you must do. Come on, people, people who, who don't serve God, don't regard uh, your God as any high authority can start to tell you, listen, you've got to live here in this place. You've got to pay me back at these installments, otherwise, you know, we start to honour the wrong source. 
Come on, you should have a bit of a boldness in you, a bit of a something in you to say, you know what, listen, these are the hours I can do because I want to have Sunday uh, to serve God. And if they say, no, you need to work Sunday, you say, okay, God bless you. Well, I can't work this job then. Listen, I'm not, so, I'm not going over, listen, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying go tomorrow, go and quit your job. And, you know, there's nurses, doctors. I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying that. Uh, but there should be something about you that says, no, 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 I know where my income comes from and it's not you. God may be using you and this company to channel it through you, but listen, listen, God is my supplier. If you were to make a decision to say we're cutting you tomorrow, God would open up another door the next day. You need to have that kind of a, 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 a thing about you because you need to understand, because if you don't, you begin to honour the wrong source. And then when it comes to simple things, yes, I'm saying simple things like tithing, <laughs> Let that one settle. I said simple. The reason why it's simple is because I know where my income came from. <laughs> it's simple that we just say, listen, that came from you. Well, I only have to give you 10% of it. Well, please, you gave me 100% of it in the first place. I would rather live on 90% blessed than, than 100% cursed. Come on now. Look what Abraham said after he rescued his nephew. You know, his nephew Lot uh, he moved away because they was getting big and they said, let's split about so we don't argue. You find the land, wherever you want to go, I'll go the other way. So Lot chose uh, the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and in the mix of that, uh, he got into some trouble. Uh, people captured him and his family and so on and all their goods. Uh, and they've been going around the countries doing that. So they had loads of goods. Uh, Abraham went with a few of his men and went to go and rescue his nephew. And he did. And, you know, in those days when you uh, conquer people, or, or uh, you know, fight and win over armies, uh, uh, there's a lot of loot that is left over from all the uh, looting that they've been doing. And, and look at this. Uh, the king said to them in, in, um, in verse number 21 of Genesis 14, it says, Now the king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. Um, but Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord uh, God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, that I will not take anything that that is yours, lest you say, I have made Abraham rich. He's basically saying, listen, I know where my income comes from and it doesn't need to come from you, bro. I don't want to take this and then you say, oh yeah, the only reason Abraham's rich is because of me. No, 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 you can keep your stuff because I serve the God the Most High. And I don't have to go and do some dodgy dealings. Come on now. I don't have to do some scamming and scheming. I don't have to lie on my tax report because I know I serve the God the Most High. I don't have to withhold more than it's right because the Bible says that leads to poverty. I serve the God the Most High. He is able to do all exceedingly and abundantly and above all that I can ever ask or even think. That's the God we serve. And we need to understand the source so that we can correctly honour him. Because if we don't, we start to honour the wrong source. I want to look with you as we start to wrap up. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We're going to read a couple of verses there, starting from verse number 7. It says, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Can you say amen to that one? Verse number A, and, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things. Look how many times it says all. <laughs> May have an abundance for every good work. As it's, as it's written, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now... May he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberty which causes thanksgiving through us to God. I love that. Paul again understands who the supplier is. He said, now may he who supplies seed to the sow and bread for the food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown. Come on, we need to understand the supplier in this supply chain. And it starts with understanding that I am blessed to be a blessing. 
When you understand that, you have a proper connection to the supply chain, that this thing could keep on going. I don't know who said it, but it's a quote going around. And it says, if God can get money through you, he will get money to you. Right, if that can just keep on going, just keep on flowing, because you understand what's, where it comes from. You're not, you know, you're not, not tight fish, you're not kind of selfish. Listen, yes, you're taking care of your own needs, you're blessing your own needs, you are blessed as, as because of it, but you also, you are a blessing. You understand this all comes from the great I am. So we don't have to be afraid, uh, we don't have to be afraid of giving out or afraid of spending. Listen, we rather should try and meet people's needs, try and find people's needs, and see if there's a need that I can meet. Listen, maybe we'll, we'll start to put that process in this church when we start having envelopes. Listen, maybe grab one of those envelopes, find a need, write somebody's name in it, put it in the box and watch them be blessed. See God use your life because we all understand that this supply chain will work efficiently because we serve a God that owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the Bible says. We serve a God that can never run out of resources. We serve a God that is not sitting up in heaven thinking how am I meant to pay this light bill no we serve a God that is abundant we serve a God that also loves to bless his children listen we are sons and daughters of God the Bible says think of a father that doesn't want to bless their children our heavenly father wants to bless us he wants to bless us abundantly listen we need to remember to honour him because he is the source of everything good that we can possess And when we recognize the supplier in this supply chain, listen, we can move and logistics can flow efficiently. And we can see God bring the increase in every area of our life. Kingdom prosperity is something that we need to think about when we recognize that God wants us to prosper. That poverty is a curse. It's been a curse from the very beginning. And that uh, the supplier of all of this is God himself, the Almighty. And as we honour him, I really do believe uh, that we would see kingdom prosperity in our lives uh, and in this congregation right now. Let's uh, bow our heads and close our eyes in this place as we consider the supply chain.